We're also joined in person now by West Virginia Independent Senator Joe Manchin. Good to see you, Senator. Good to be with you, Margaret. So you have made some news this morning, Senator, uh, saying it is time for Joe Biden to pass the torch. Did he know you were going to publicly say this? Uh, they, were, they were informed. L let me make sure that we preface this by saying how we got to where we got to. After for three weeks, I haven't said anything because I thought after the debate that the president needed to process that. And it took a week. I thought, you know, there might be some movement there. And then the next two weeks have been from my colleagues around the country, whether it be Congress, Congress districts or whether it be states of senators that are mm -hmm. in really challenging areas. Now you're hearing from them and the concerns they have with down ballot, how it might affect them. Then on top of that, you have the donor class who is showing great reserve right now. With that, I, I do this with a very heavy heart in saying that I would like for President Biden to be able to finish his five months of leading this country, truly leading this country, the way I know he can. I've known him for many, many years. He's a good person. He wants to do, he's a patriot. He wants to do the right thing. He wants to heal and bring people together. Mm -hmm. And if at this point in time he would pass that torch, he would be able to focus all of his energy toward in the next five months of how do we heal? How do we stop the, the fighting in Gaza? How do we get to a peace treaty? How do we support Ukraine so that they can have a strong position at the, at the bargaining table? Uh, these are the things. And then basically show the rest of the world how the superpower of the world is mm -hmm. able to have a transfer of power and do it in the most beneficial way for the whole world to see that it can be done. But Republicans are saying if they if he can't stand for re-election, then he can't even serve the next five well, let months. Let me just say about re-election. You think he's capable of serving the next five months? Congressman Turner and I both understand this, that the, the rigors of a campaign is tough. I've been on statewide campaigns. He's in a large area and large district. These are tough and it takes a lot of toll. The president needs to be the president, okay? Mm -hmm. But being in a campaign mode every day, Every day being a campaign mode, think what the next speech is going to be, the next fundraiser is going to be, takes you away from the needs that we have in the world today and in our country. I definitely believe he can do that. And I believe he can do it better than anybody else and leave with a legacy unmatched. That's what I know can be done and should be done. And I'm just very hopeful that this torch is passed to a new generation to allow President Biden be the president I know he is and can be. We have our disagreements. We get back and forth, and but uh, I've uh, I have all the confidence in the world he could do. How that. much time do Democrats have to settle this? I think the time is very short. I mean, if it goes into the camp, uh, into the uh, convention itself, mm -hmm. that changes the whole dynamics. But before the convention, I believe that there could be an open primary process, and let the cream rise. I've got two governors in my neighborhood. I've got. Kentucky, Andy Bashir, and I've got Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania, both working in challenging areas, mm -hmm. both able to be able to work with a legislature that is not of their own party, be able not to villainize anyone who happens to have an R by their name because they have a D by their name, and bringing their states together and having some progress. Let's hear from some of the, 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 the rising stars, this new generation. But black women are the backbone of the Democratic Party. If you bypass the vice president, Kamala Harris, doesn't that undermine This is not about race and support. gender, Margaret. It's no, not, but it's about votes Well, it's and, not about race and, Okay, but the bottom line is 51% of those people who are participating in voting in the process in America are registered independents. They're not registered Democrat or Republican. Only 25% Republican and 23% Democrats. These are people that want issues solved. So worrying about whose agenda and what race you are, other than what the issues are, how do they lose Democrats like me, Margaret? A lifelong Democrat from West Virginia. Mm -hmm. I, I was raised in, 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 a, in a family and also an understanding that that's not my enemy on the other side. Democrats were basically held accountable and responsible. We are, we are basically uh, fiscally responsible and socially compassionate. And I don't believe the government should be your it's your provider. Government so if you go through this open open right, process right, right, before right. the convention and Kamala Harris, the vice president, emerges as a nominee, would you be able to support her? Well, it depends on what the policies are. I want to see the platform change. Would you be would you I be would interested consider. Sure, I would consider. In would, a vice presidential spot on that ticket? It's not me. No, forget about me. This You're is not going to run. No, this is a new generation, Margaret. We've got a lot of deep people on the bench that can serve mm -hmm. and they have proven they're meddled by be, uh, being in an executive position. Give them a chance to rise. Give the president, Biden, a chance to do what he really, really can do. See, I believe that the president should only have one six-year term. I don't believe there should ever be in a re-election. And why that? You need a president from day one till the day they finish. So last night in Michigan, this is what Donald Trump had to say about the disarray among Democrats. 
They have a couple of problems. Number one, they have no idea who their candidate is, and neither do we. Sort of interesting, this guy goes and he gets the votes, and now they want to take it away. That's democracy. They talk about democracy. Let's take it away from them. Do you fear that by speaking publicly, not dealing with this earlier, that Democrats are not just hurting their own candidate, but hurting faith in the process? Well, first of all... There was a primary. Let me just say this. First of all, that we saw the, the uh, convention for the, Dem for the Republicans. They did a wonderful job. Four days, perfectly scripted, done a great job, unity. And then President uh, Trump spoke. And the last hour of his speech never changed. Mm -hmm. So I still have the concerns about orderly transfer of power. I know that January 6th was real. I have all these concerns about his basically continuing to attack the judicial system that we have and the rule of law. I have all those same concerns I've had and also sending signals he might not be there to help the free-loving countries that are our allies and our NATO allies and people that count on us to have that leadership of freedom and be there for them. Those are my concerns with what I heard and nothing has changed. J.D. Vance uh, is from a similar part of the country that you are from, and he has made a virtue of that, said he's going to go out and campaign in Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania, talk about his Appalachian roots, and he calls himself the most pro-union Republican in Congress. He's railing against corporations. Do you find this pitch to be authentic, and will it work? I, I, uh, J.D., I would, I, I've always said this. You, whoever you send me from your state, I'm going to work every way I can to make sure they're successful and we're all successful. I haven't had that much experience with J.D. because he hasn't been there that long. Seemed like a very nice person. We have pleasantries when we're together and everything. I came, not only my roots, my entire, entire orchard is all about West Virginia. That's who I am. So when I see that, I've been asked one time about my Democrat colleagues. They asked me, I said, Joe, what happened to the West Virginia Democrats? I said, nothing. They want to know what happened to the Washington Democrats. We've done everything you've asked us in West Virginia. We've mined the coal, made the steel, built the guns and ships. We've had more people that have given their blood mm -hmm. and lives supporting our country, patriotic. And now we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, and we're not green enough. What happened? We're the people that basically helped build this country. Don't leave anybody behind. And so with that, mm -hmm. that's why I am not, because I believe that the far left of the Democratic Party has captured, truly, the party that I knew, and they've captured and taken away. I want to see that party come back. They should be trying to get the 51% of the independents, like myself, that have left. And you think Bashir and Shapiro are the top two choices that would I be think able to amplify that message? I've seen those two people operate in very difficult situations and do it successfully, and not villainizing and keeping their, their states whole. That, to me, is accomplishment. That's what we're looking for. And that's what America, they want the sensible, um, moderate middle. They want basically who we are. We don't operate our life that way. How, why is there 51% of the people in America that says, I'm not affiliated with either party? Mm. Something's wrong. And you better play to that because you're not going to win with just 23 or 25%. If, if this change doesn't happen, and, and all the reporting today is that President Biden is dug in here, will you be able to support him? Again, I've said... I'm not endorsing or supporting anyone right Will now until, oh, I always vote. I'll always vote. And I'll make that decision when I walk into the booth. But I would like to see a movement towards the sensible middle. And I've been saying that for a long time. I'm waiting to my friend, Joe Biden, who I've known forever. Mm -hmm. You could always make a deal. You could always sit down. He'd bring people together. He'd always accommodate you some way. I know that, and I've worked with that for many years. That's what I'm but looking for. You, you can't get through Well, I'm saying, you when you have going? Bernie Sanders on one side and Joe Manchin on the other side, that's a big chasm. Mm -hmm. That's large. You've got to bring that together. We respect each other. We should be able to come together, but it can't be all one way or the other. Senator Manchin, thank you. Always good to be with you, Margaret. Thank you for sharing with us.